how is anything not racial justice? So when you talk about how is climate justice racial justice, I almost want to pose the question back to the audience and say, give me an example of anything that doesn't tie back to racial justice. And that's their homework. My name is Udo Kam Irebu. My pronouns are she, her, and hers, and I identify as pansexual and demisexual. Black Lives Matter fights for the liberation of black folks in solidarity with indigenous communities. We are on stolen land, and so it is very important to us to align and be in solidarity with indigenous folks of these lands. When you look at climate justice and look at its history, you can trace it all the way back to the extraction of land that led to slavery, which led to colonization, which led to capitalism and the industrial complex, and now we have climate change. It's a bit difficult to argue climate justice and not see its direct connection to racial justice when you look at that map. Times News had an article that talked about the top six most impacted places by climate change and the top three were racialized places. Lagos and Nigeria, we have Haiti and then we have Yemen. What stands out to me is black folks and brown bodies and racialized people and we are the least contributors to climate change. You can't just look at climate justice as this separate thing from the historical context of the ways that black and indigenous people are always put on the front lines. When you look at the indigenous communities, for example, and their fight to protect the land as land defenders, you see the ways that the state enacts violence on them using the police. And that's something that Black Lives Matter is also fighting against. We saw it during West Suetin, um, fights out to defend the land up in Inostotin camp. We even saw it here in Vancouver, our blockades and how those were dispersed and folks were arrested by police. Even look at the history of policing and how in Canada it was was used to uh, subjugate indigenous communities and how in the U.S., since we want to separate things by borders, how in the U.S. it was used to catch runaway slaves and runaway enslaved people. If it's black folks fighting for racial justice, the police is also present to enact that violence. And so when you look at the police as an institution, it's hard to separate the violence from them and from their mandate. You see that playing out during the pandemic with George Floyd. Uh, you see that playing out with Brianna Taylor, Regis Gronczewski Paquette, Samuel Uko, Tony McDade. I am very bad at visualizing a world where we've achieved uh, racial justice or we've achieved climate justice. I see it as a world where we respect indigenous practices, we support land defenders. I see it as a moment where we give land back, not in a sense that we literally say this land is now yours again, it always has been, but we have indigenous people actually dictating what happens to the land. I also see it as black folks free from state violence, actually being able to live and survive and thrive and grow old, being able to take up space, uh, feel supported. I, I almost can't get past survive. It's almost like above mattering. It's like black folks exist and then we're trying to say that we matter and then the next step is black folks need to survive and thrive. What should people know about the severity of racial issues in Canada? Understand that anti-blackness and anti-indigeneity is prevalent across the world. You should also understand that Canada has great PR, and so a lot of the things that happen, we don't hear about it, and it's not as blatant in your face as it is in the US. People are still being killed, and people are still being imprisoned at disproportionate rates here. We have indigenous communities in Northern Ontario that are still fighting today for clean drinking water. We have people that are teenagers that have never had access to clean drinking water, and I see that as a form of state-sanctioned violence. There they're just the base that we should stop having. So for example, Canada did have a history of slavery. Um, yes, it didn't last as long as the US, but it was still slavery. Human beings were still enslaved to further the growth of this nation. And so it's something that people should just know to be true and from there do some more research read books by black authors read books by indigenous authors listen to black and indigenous people go out and find that information because canada doesn't make it easy question your media intake uh, question your friend circles uh, correct your grandparents 
demand better education for, the, for our children, and demand racial and climate justice. That's it. Once you start doing those things and start understanding that you've been lied to um, and that these lies you're telling, you're part of this, the system that continues to oppress people, you're one step closer to actually understanding and being a part of the fight. In the conversations around climate justice, we just need to be listening to the indigenous people of the land. Uplift their voices, because they are speaking. They, they know exactly what the land needs. They are land defenders. That's the first and the only place to really start.